Hey guys, welcome to the Coffin Nail. My name is Lightbreaker, and today on the show, I'm delighted to welcome Tyler from Capra. Tyler, welcome hey, to the show, bro. Hey, how's it going? Thanks for having me. Oh, uh, my pleasure, bud. Uh, so, obviously, most important qu question first: What flavor is that vape? Uh, it's like this custard cookie. Uh, it's custard one I cookie. went with, and it's, it tastes really good. I'm I'm usually not one for like super flavors, but this one's delicious. Custard cookie. That's a new one for me, but I like it. <laughs> yeah, everybody loves the smell. Like whenever you know, if if I like exhale it and people are around, they're like, "Oh, it smells so good!" And I'm like, "Well, it, it tastes good too." No one's ever said that about a cigarette. Well, the, at least not the smelling part. I think. Right. I just stopped smoking. I think four months ago. I've had one cigarette in four or five months, which is surprising for me. But we're doing good for it. For you, man. Fair play. Thanks. Yeah. But to more pressing matters. Yeah. Capra released your debut album in Transmissions back in April on Metal Blade Records and Blacklight Media. So congratulations on that, man. I only discovered it recently, but it's a fucking stormer. Thank you. Thank you so much. So let's start with some simple stuff. Talk us through the title. I've read online, though not with great sources, that it wasn't the original title. And I also want to know what in Transmission means to you. Uh, no, it wasn't the original title. I think we had like I, I had a notebook just filled with uh, with ideas, and I don't even remember what was in runner up position for the album. But mm -hmm. we realized quickly. I'm trying to think of what it was, but anyway, it it wouldn't have worked with the time. Like it it was. Um, I think it might have gotten us canceled. <laughs> is what I'm saying. <laughs> it was pretty. It was pretty out there. Uh, so we, we, we disregarded that title and we went with In Transmission just because uh, we had we had been sitting on the album since 2019. Uh, it was it's been done since 2019 and uh, we were on track to release it, I believe, in like between April and June of 2020 uh, self released. Like we hadn't even talked to Metal Blade yet hmm. and uh, Metal Blade reached out to us in February of 2020. So. We were like, okay, we're, we're going to sit on this album for a little while for sure, just because we want to work out this deal with them. Uh, and then the pandemic hit and then everything shut down. Metal Blade shut down. We got really nervous because uh, we thought we were offered a deal. And then when the pandemic hit, everything shut down. So we were like, oh, we, we, we might have just lost this deal. Like it might never really? come back again. But they hit us back up in July and then we started working through the process and we decided on, and I think we originally decided on a February 2020 release date, but we tried to push it back so that we could tour with the album. So the latest we could push it back was April. Uh, so it, it had been about a year and a half. We were sitting on the album and I mean, we finally put it in transmission. Like it, it's just, it was something we wanted to, We've been we have been sitting on to give to the world and so there's there's that meaning and then it's kind of like I guess it's just it's just up to the listener really. Like we we've come up with so many different meanings behind it. Uh the the honest answer is that it's a Thursday song. And oh, uh nice. I'm a big fan of Thursday and I was listening to one of their albums and in the, the song in transmission came on and I was like, that's it. Like that's our album title right there. So oh, we fair. definitely take influence from them. Thursday. I can never get the hang of Thursdays. Yeah. So yeah. Sorry, mm -hmm. obs obscure sci fi reference. <laughs> 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 no, Thursday are fucking rad, man. I haven't listened to them in ages actually. Another band that was uh, just on, on Furnace Fest, which was crazy. Man, that sounds like a fucking time. But you mentioned about having this album ready for a very long time. I assume, considering that it's your first release and technically the band formed back in 2016, that you've been sitting on some of the songs for a lot longer than others. How do you go about the selection process when some songs are much significantly younger than the others? Uh, we do a lot of, I mean, we, we just feel it. You know, we we had written probably eight to ten songs that did not make it on the album. Um, and then there's about three or four. No, maybe less than that, maybe two to three that were uh, that were written in, in the beginning of Capra that made it on. Samurai Carrie being one of them, Medusa being another. 
Uh, Red Guillotine is pretty old. I think we wrote Red Guillotine in 2017. And uh, I think those are, I think that's the three. Everything else, like Crow joined in 2018. Mm -hmm. And we started reworking, like she rewrote the lyrics for those three songs that had already existed. And then when she joined, we just kind of started writing new material. Right. Well, uh, you did name drop a couple of my favorite songs there. A couple of which I wanted to ask you about in different questions. So that's, thank you for the easy segue. Yeah, for sure. And I wanted to ask about Samurai Carey because excellent title. When I only thank had you. a few minutes to check you guys out first, that's the one I went to first before listening through the whole album. But once I got familiar with the album, it, it fits in a listening experience, but the title does stand out because the rest are quite serious and to the point. Yeah. Yeah. We always have to have a, we have to have a joke song, which is right. not a joke song, but uh, it was, a, it was something I thought of. Samurai Carrie was something I thought of on tour uh, one day. And I was, I was thinking about starting a side band called Samurai Carrie, which I just never ended up doing. I'm way too busy with Capra. Uh, so we decided to just throw it on the album to make it a song title. And even though it has nothing to do with the lyrics, like it's just, it's the perfect name for that song. You know, it's, yeah, yeah. Samurai Fury is, is definitely a different song than the rest of the album. It's a perfect closing song. Uh, it it kind of shows, you know, that we can be a little bit less crazy. We can be a little bit more melodic and mm -hmm. have structure to our song rather than it just be chaos the entire time. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Um, well, again, perfect segue into the other thing I wanted to ask you about, particularly with Medusa, which is probably, after maybe a dozen listens, probably my favorite track on the album. Is, awesome, thank it's, you. It's very welcome. It's probably the best example of, you have very unusual song structure. There's very little A, B, A, B, C, like conventional song structure and repetition. And you take these hard right turns going from one riff very much to the other. And sometimes it's songs that flow into each other. Like I think, Red, is it Mutt into Transfiguration? But there's a, moment yeah, in, I think so. there's a moment in Medusa that sounds like that, but it's still the same song. It's not even halfway. Is that something you try to do? Does that happen organically? Uh, yes and no. Um, Medusa started off as like my homage to motorhead like that was uh, i've always been a big motorhead fan so the beginning of that song is very very motorhead and then yeah. it gets into more of our style which when i write like it just depends on what kind of mood i'm in and i want those switches uh it, it just it just depends on what works like sometimes especially when i'm writing a song like i'll try a riff over and over and over again to make it fit and it just doesn't work Hmm. It just sounds forced or it sounds like riff soup at this point. <laughs> um, so it, it has to have this flow to it for sure. Um, so yes, there's like a level of, of chaos and hard right turns that I want to put into the songs. Do I know that I'm going to do that like perfectly? Hmm. No, not when I'm writing it. Uh, that really comes from like when I get the drums and bass in there and, and we, we kind of work it all out together. And then I'll, I, you know, I'll have like three or four songs written and then I'll take parts from each of those songs and make it one song. So okay. that's, that's really where it comes from. And like, I'll be like, Oh, I have four songs written right now. And that becomes one song. And then I'm out three songs, you know, like now I yeah. got to write four more songs just to get one more out of it. <laughs> well, I guess you can never stop Frankenstein them. Yeah, well, I, I mean, that's what I do. Like, that's my addiction is, is guitar. And I, I just constantly write. Uh, I'm constantly just taking, like, my emotions and, and, and what I'm going through in life and, and putting it into guitar. And I think that translates well. And then I think, you know, vocally with her struggles and everything, you know, that she's been through and her experiences, I think, I think it's just a perfect mesh, you know? Yeah, I hear you. And I can tell how much you like guitar, from looking at your Instagram, I've seen a couple of videos where you're just like, here's a riff I just wrote. Let's have a go. Right. And I love that enthusiasm. So considering yeah. that some of your riffs are simple and groovy and some of them are pretty techers, what makes a good riff to you? Oh, 
Wow, a question I've never been asked. That's awesome. Yes. Uh, very hard question, too. <laughs> yeah. um, what makes a good riff? Um, damn. It's got to make me move. And, like, it's got to, mm. you know... I'm I'm pretty jaded when it comes to music and when it comes to riffs. Uh, I live in the early 2000s, you know. <laughs> I think we're and, neighbors there. <laughs> what's that? I think we're neighbors there in the early 2000s. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> uh, so it, it just depends on what kind of riff I'm writing. Like if I'm writing a complicated riff, like obviously it has to have like a perfect loop sense. It's got to have. Um, it's just got to make me me feel it. It's got to make me vibe and move and. If I'm shaking my head, like while I'm writing it, I know it's good. Mm. And then like, I play for my dog a lot too. So my <laughs> dog is always sitting there, she's listening. And I know if, you know, if she starts going crazy, I know it's a good riff. <laughs> we have very different dogs, man. Mine yeah, she, she loves, she loves the guitar. I mean, she was, she was born around it. That's all she knows really. Oh, that's awesome. And do you ever write a, a challenging riff? I challenge us into play that maybe you simplify a little bit for the sake of still being able to play it accurately while you're jumping around on stage. No, no. <laughs> uh, it, it, no, if I have the riff and it's in my head and, and I, I mean, Locust Preacher is like a prime example. There's some riffs in that song that took me maybe three to four weeks to perfect, like to actually mm -hmm. get down and, and build the muscle memory to play them. Um, because I'm not, you know, I'm not the best guitar player in the world. I just have my own style. And mm. like some of these riffs that I'm writing, like I can think of them and I can put them down, but I still have to learn, you know? Yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, Locust Preacher is a really good example. It took me quite a while to get the little rolls right before the chorus. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it, I mean, I'll never, I'll never simplify anything. Yeah. Those rolls. If it's the ones I'm thinking of, I definitely heard it and had to pause it. And like, that reminds me of some old school trash band, but I can't put my finger quite on it. Yeah, for sure. We do have yeah. a lot of like thrashy tendencies. I'm surprised we don't get that more often. And I yeah. think on the new record, we will. Ooh, uh, new record. Yeah. We, I, I've been, I mean, I've been writing a lot of thrashy stuff. Hmm. I think the new, I think the new album is going to be a lot different for people, but it's definitely an evolution of the band especially since we've added a guitar player since then. There you go again. That was my next question. How have things changed since Trevor joined the band? Yeah. So, I mean, Trevor, like I've been asking Trevor to join the band since 2016. Uh, hmm. He plays in another band called Camps and he played in a, a hardcore band called Hole Opener. And uh, uh, they were so good. And, and so I knew he knew our style we don't have too many hardcore bands here in Lafayette, Louisiana. Um, so I knew he understood what we were going for. So I've been asking him, I think I've asked him like four times. And uh, finally, I think in October of last year, I asked him to join the band and he said yes. And uh, so it took us about six, seven months to announce it, you know. Right. We didn't want to announce it before the album released, but... Yeah, he's been he's been with us for almost a year now, and uh, mm -hmm. the writing process has definitely gotten a lot stronger. Uh, we're doing some cool stuff that we that I, I couldn't do just as one guitar player. Right. Um, I think the new stuff is going to have it's going to be, for the most part, more simplistic, which sounds crazy adding a new guitar player and then going more simplistic. But it gives you space for a groove, man. It's more groove, and I want this album to be more vocally driven. Uh, there is a lot of thrash. Uh, we might have, we might throw a little bit of like our, our, our black metal style that we did on the first album in there. Uh, but, you know, overall, like we just have to evolve as a band. And with Trevor joining, I think that's exactly what we did. Excellent. Well, I can't wait to hear some new stuff. I'm, I'm sure it's probably a little early, but any rough idea when that might be out uh there's no telling um we may end up doing a few singles next year mm -hmm. uh and then hopefully hopefully early 2023 we would release another album 
Uh, cool. I'm thinking we'll do, I'm thinking next year will probably be singles and an EP. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'd like to get on board with splits. I, I don't know if, if that's something that yeah. we can do. Uh, but I'm a big old school, hardcore punk fan of just mm. splits with bands. Like I'm, I'm the kind of person that would rather tour with my homies than with some, some band that's gigantic. Yeah. Yeah. I hear you. Well, as well in in the Spotify age, where most bands are going to putting out two or three songs here and there rather than full albums every three or four years, it also crosses over nicely doing splits with keeping true to like punk and hardcore traditionalism of you know each band puts two or three songs, releases it together. You can For sell sure. your yeah. sell your vinyl to the purists. It's an easy. Yeah, I mean, you're selling vinyl in two different spots. You know, you're you're hitting two cities at one time, which is is really cool. And we have a lot of good friends. I mean, I could give shout outs all day, but we'll, we'll leave that friend. What's that? Go go right ahead. Check out a few few names for us to uh, look okay, up. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, our good friends. We're playing with them Friday. Uh, they're called Torture Garden. They're from New Orleans, Louisiana. Uh, very good hardcore punk band. Uh, there's Glassing from Austin, Texas. You know, there's uh, the Grasshopper Lights Heavy from San Antonio. Uh, Cal That's Cowboys a terrific from name. Atlanta. I'm sorry? Grasshopper Lights Heavy. That's a yeah. fucking great name. Yeah, it was one of the loudest bands uh, <laughs> I've ever played with. You know, James is such a good dude. And, and uh, yeah, they are insanely loud. Hmm. No, that's awesome, man. It's good to see you yeah, got such a, a scene. Of, there's a lot of cool stuff that's like, you know, right on the brink of just ultimate success. And I think, you know, as time goes by, a lot of these bands are going to get a lot bigger. So we'll see. Yeah, I'm rooting for man. all my friends. No, awesome. Well, not all of them are lucky enough to be on Metal Blade. So you're doing well. Yeah, dude. that was a huge feat for us. Uh, we, we, I mean, we got super lucky with that. We made, you know, we made the right connections. We worked really hard and uh, we got... We got recognized for it, which is great. Awesome, man. Now, this question may be better suited for Crow, but actually I think you'll have an interesting take on it as well. As you're in a band with a front woman, what insights have you learned? What things have you noticed that you wouldn't have ha have noticed if you weren't in a band with a front woman, if it was an all-male band? Uh, I, I mean, there's just certain people out there that like aren't going to like it. That's that's the first thing we notice, you know, like if you've got a woman screaming in a band, like there's just all these old schoolers and there's there's, I guess, new crowds, too, that just if, if it's not a man, then it's not good, which is completely unacceptable mm. in this day and age. Uh, we've had a sound guy before think that she was our merch girl. Uh, mm -hmm. And then she was like, you know, just just wait, you know, yeah. and then we ended up blowing that dude's mind. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it just, you know, there, there, there's a few, there's a few negatives about it, but overall, like, I mean, she fits our style. She's exactly what we want in, in a front woman. You know, she's, she's perfect yeah. in every way for our band, our sound. She cuts through. Uh, so we're just going to keep doing what we do and regardless of, uh, of what other people think, you know? No, fucking fair play. Cause I just, I've, there's things I've noticed when I've played shows in the past with, um, playing show with an all male lineup versus all female lineup, and just seeing the way people are treated differently, it's it's always worth yeah, asking. It's, in different it's bands, really you know? sad, man. And we have yeah. so many good. Like the reason, the reason I chose to uh, get a woman in our band was because I, that's really what I, I have been listening to. You know, like I had been really into. I got really into Oathbreaker, mm. and then I got. And then I went back in the past and I was listening to Walls of Jericho. Uh, yeah, there's a new band called Gouge Away from Florida that I got really into. And then we, we have so many bands just like up and coming, like, uh, what, what is it? Spirit Box? Like, yeah, yeah. Spirit Box so are everywhere now. I think it's becoming more normal, which is, which is awesome. Yeah. Uh, you're just, you're still going to have those people that, uh, I don't know. Want, yeah. Want a man singing for some reason? And fuck him, basically. Yeah, just fuck him. 
Yeah, because the first time I heard you guys, I thought, oh, wow, this is like Sharp Tooth meets Converge. Yeah, yeah that's rad. a good comparison. So I wanted to ask you if, if you're okay talking about this. You formed the band at the start of your sobriety, and I understand you're five years sober now, correct? Uh, six and a half years. Oh, wow. Congratulations, bro. Thank you. That's a long time. And so my question is, how has Capra been a part of that? It's, it's everything. It's, uh, it's what's kept me sober. It's, uh, I don't know how to explain it. I'm just eternally grateful for this band. It, um, uh, it was my release, you know, like I went into a rehab in June of 2000, no, July of 2015. And I stayed for three months, July, September, October. And then I went into sober living for a month out in Florida. And then when I moved back, you know, Jeremy and I had been, uh, we had been playing in bands all of our lives. Uh, I think this is our ninth band together. We've just, we've been best friends. So we, we read each other really well when it comes to music, not even looking at each other, just knowing when to go into a park kind of stuff. Uh, and I wanted to do something fast. I wanted to do like, we came from our last band was called Severer. And it was like this completely straightforward New Orleans style sludge doom band. And it was the most evil thing on the planet. Like, uh, and I wanted to just flip the script and do something completely opposite. Uh, so we started Capra. I originally started playing bass for that band. And Jeremy, the drummer, currently was the guitar player. Hmm. And we had a completely different drummer at the time. Uh, Devin, who is an incredible guy. Uh, but he ended up leaving the band. Jeremy knows how to play. He's a born drummer. So it was mm. actually, he actually, uh, Devin actually left the band the night before a show that we had. Oh, and uh, good, Devin. Jeremy and I just decided to play it. You know, we were like, let's still play the show. Jeremy hopped on drums. I hopped on guitar. And that's really whenever Capra was born. Nice. Uh, and he, I mean, yeah, so the, the, the whole time, like, this was just kind of like me uh, switching my obsessions. Like, I mean, I was obsessed with drugs and alcohol for, I don't know, 15 years. Right. And uh, so this was me switching my obsession to something that I could just put my all into. And mm. uh, Capra's really, you know, it's, it's helped me stay sober. And I, I don't think I would have progressed as far as I've come if I wasn't. Yeah. Oh, good on you, man. And, you know, if it's something you put your all into, you're getting a lot out of it. It Every yeah, note yeah, is yeah. fantastic, man. Oh, absolutely, man. Yeah, I mean, life's just, life's great. I, awesome. I can't imagine going back. Like, there's no going back for me. So. <laughs> yeah. And I'll bet you're stoked as well. I saw that you have a custom guitar by, yeah. um, I'm sure I'll mispronounce this, Balag Balagur, Balagur? I haven't heard Balagur, of this brand before. yeah. Balagur. Yeah, Tell me about that, man. Uh, so I had ordered, uh, I, I built it, you know, it, they, they have a, a website where you can custom build the guitar you want. And uh, I, I chose the Enigma, which is based off like the old Guild guitars. Hmm. And uh, man, I dazzled it up and I spent a little bit too much money on it. Uh, <laughs> but I, I mean, no regrets. I ended up uh, getting into contact with them and uh actually getting endorsed by them which is super cool now i have two of them i bought another one like i, I still haven't gotten the one i ordered it's coming in <laughs> it, it should be i think i'm gonna pick it up actually on tour in philly oh, nice so i'll get to actually go to like the whole balaguer factory and 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 pick it up rather than than mail it which is super oh, cool so man cool. Yeah. yeah it's crazy how everything kind of works out yeah who'd have thunk Sign Metal Blade custom guitar, if you could tell that to Teenage You. Right. Well, next up is the signature guitar. Like It's not a signature uh, yet. Okay. But hopefully, uh, we, can make, we can make that happen at some point. Looks like you're on your way, bro. I hope and so. you are setting off on North American tour underway by the time this interview will go out. Tell us about the tour. Yeah. Who are you playing with? Where are you going? Uh, so we, we kick it off, uh, Thursday, which I guess when this comes out would be yesterday. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, so we're playing with, in Baton Rouge with Portrayal of Guilt and, uh, Glacial Coffin, two very cool bands. 
Uh, then we do New Orleans. Uh, we're hitting Atlanta, Jacksonville, going all the way up to Brooklyn and Philly, Chicago. And I mean, we're going everywhere, everywhere East Coast. I know California is a little bit upset right now. We're not hitting that area, but we will. Uh, it's yeah. in the works. It's in the works for next year, uh, as well as um, either a European tour or an Australian tour. So it depends on which which of you guys opens up first and allows us to come over there. So. Odds are it's going to be us, man. We're pretty much open for business. It's it looking it's looking that way, yeah. So we uh, <laughs> we locked down uh, a European booking agency with a uh, Roman. I forget the 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 company name but uh we should be out there soon man I, i'm looking forward to coming back i miss europe for sure yeah well I'll tell you what man i can't wait yeah germany's crazy i've played uh six or seven shows out there and and you guys go nuts <laughs> i've seen some crazy shows here all right it, and there's something for everyone like yeah for sure. that's what i love about berlin just in general whether that's musically or literally anything else you could be a banker or a punk or a hippie whatever it all goes here and it it's pretty fun yeah. awesome so before i let you go we always wrap up the coffin ale interviews with a quick lightning round so i'll give you one or the other and just pick one okay i'm so bad at these but let's do it <laughs> don't overthink it you can be impressive all, right. all right ribs or wings uh wings every time i die or converge Sheesh. Uh, every time I die. I hope you know that whichever one you didn't choose gets struck from history. So, okay. Oh, no, you didn't tell me that. <laughs> Horrible question. No, I thought that would trouble you. All right. Star Trek The Next Generation or Deep Space Nine? Oh, I've never gotten into Star Trek. I don't know. Uh, okay. I hope um, I picked the right one. <laughs> I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty nerdy of a guy, but that's one I've never crept into. Uh, all right, all right. Battlestar Galactica. Oh well, that is the correct answer. If it's a blind there we guess. Go. I it. Awesome. <laughs> and now I gotta watch it. Now I have to. I can't let the fans down. They're gonna be asking me about it. DS9 is the shit. Um, <clears throat> on tour, would you rather have good food or a good bed? Oh, good bed. Yeah. Good bed. I think, I don't know. I, I would want both. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I'm sticking with good bed. Cause like on <laughs> tour, I'm pretty cheap. I eat just like ham and cheese sandwiches. Like I don't yeah. spend money on every restaurant I see. So I, you know what? I, I can survive the road on crap food. And if I have a good bed, that's the better I play the next night. You know? So Fair yeah, I'm choosing that. Yeah, well, just wait till you're on album cycle number three and you're touring for three months straight eating pizza every night. I'll ask you yeah, again can't, then. Yeah, can't wait. <laughs> That's the dream. Final question. Star Wars prequels or sequels? Prequels? Wait. What, which ones are we talking about here? One, two, three, or seven, eight, nine? Oh. Ew, seven, eight, nine. For sure. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, the one through three was they were okay. I said prequels initially because I thought you meant uh, like four, five, six, which uh, I would. I mean, that's the do. obvious answer. Yeah, that's the that's the number one answer. But yeah, I, you know what? I like the new ones. I thought they were pretty good. I actually have not watched the last one. It's much like the seventh one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, that's what I heard. No, well, I'm keeping a running tally. To see at the end of the year what all the all of our guest answers are. And establish once and for all the prequels. Are the oh, sequels. you're doing the same questions? Perfect. Yeah. No, no, not doing all the same questions. Just the Star Wars one. <laughs> just the Star Wars? Oh, I cannot wait. Yeah. Make sure you uh, get in touch with me and let me know the stats on that. Oh, I will. I absolutely will. How many will. people have picked the, the prequels? Surprisingly many. Um, yeah, I do huh? think it depends on the age of the band. There's often a sort of nostalgia thing there, like... You're a kid when Star Wars comes out for the first time in 20 yeah, years. Yeah, I saw them in exciting. theaters. Uh, and they're not the worst. I'm not like a hater of them. Uh, I just, I think they were almost too childish. I, I like the new ones a little bit more. Yeah, fair enough. Plus the new ones don't have Jar Jar Binks in it. So we're good. <laughs> 
Uh, Jar Jar Binks was, this, was a Sith Lord the whole time. Look again. I know. <laughs> Well, it's been a treat chatting to you, mate. Guys, if you haven't heard Capra's debut album, In Transmission, go check it out now on Spotify and anywhere where it is. So, Tyler, thank you so much for being on the show. Congratulations on an incredible debut album, and good luck with your tour, bro. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate you having me. You take it easy, mate. Take it easy. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching. It's YouTube, so you know the drill. Be sure to like and subscribe to get notifications about any future interviews I post here on the channel because you never know who it's going to be. Could be Scott Stapp. Could be someone good. But like and subscribe and there'll be a new interview every second week. Better still, you can listen to The Coffin Nail live on Keith FM. That's K-E-I-T-H-F-E-M dot com every second Friday from 6 to 8 p.m. German time. And for everything Coffin Nail related, go to thecoffinnailradio.com for full episodes, interviews, and exclusive articles. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.